my name is Sneha Mapala. I'm a junior at Cupertino High School, and I'm going to be talking about detecting deepfakes using machine learning on audio. So this is the agenda for today's talk. First off, I'll be doing an introduction on what deepfakes are, as well as my idea, then my method for how I'm going to be detecting audio deepfakes, the results of my um, classification results, and then the challenges I faced throughout this project, and then finally a conclusion for my talk. So just for, a, this is like a brief video of what deepfakes are. So this is a type of deepfake. It is a video deepfake. So here's like an example of it. I am not Morgan Freeman. And what you see is not real. Well, at least in contemporary terms, it is not. What if I were to tell you that I'm not even a human being? Would you believe me? What is your perception of reality? Is it the ability to capture, process, and make sense? Yeah, so this was an example of a deepfake video. This is a deepfake video of Morgan Freeman, a very well-known actor. So this means that this is the fake video, and this is the person or the real video being exchanged such that his face is being replaced with Morgan Freeman. So this is just an example just to show how the tool is being used to convert from a real video to a fake video. But in the internet, only this video will be seen um, being spread out. I am not Morgan. So to talk about what deepfakes are, well, deepfakes are a type of synthetic media that alters a source's original purpose. So there's many types of deepfakes, such as image, audio, or video. So for a video deepfake, it's where a person's face is replaced with another person's face. So many um, companies and people are being affected by deepfakes as there are many dangers of deepfakes. For instance, in the law enforcement, many people, uh, courts and judges struggle to determine whether a certain video evidence is actually real or not. So deepfakes have a lot of impact when it comes to determining whether someone is guilty or not when it comes to evidence of certain videos. And there's also the rapid increasement of inappropriate content from deepfakes. So many people's faces are being put in into these inappropriate contents. And once they're released into the internet, there's a lot of bullying that goes on for those people who are affected. There's also a lot of misinformation created from deepfakes as well. Um, this one is a really well-known issue when it comes to dangers of deepfakes. There's many recent related news also where there's many videos created um, as deepfakes. One instance is can be seen almost like a few weeks ago where Trump, there's a lot of rumors about where Trump was going to be arrested. And there is actually a video of him saying that he was being arrested as well as him getting arrested and this video was being spread out a lot throughout the internet but it was finally declared as a deep fake video yeah so these are some of the dangers of deep fakes there's many more also there's also a lot of prior work when it comes to deep fake detection there's a lot of um prior work especially to the image related part of deepfakes or video deepfakes. So some sort of methods done before were, relate to frame by frame classification. So this means that videos for videos, they extract multiple frames um, from each video and using those frames, they apply some sort of tool or use some sort of feature in each frame to be able to determine whether the video entirely is a deepfake or not. So that's kind of like kind of like binary classification, fake or not. There's also dropping out parts of an image. So certain features of a face are not as important and can have kind of a biased view on it, then they may or may not see that as having a huge effect in detecting deep fake videos. 
So there's a lot of prior work and research done on the image part of deepfakes and video part of deepfakes. There's very limited research on audio part of deepfakes. And this one is having a really rapid advancement in affecting the community, the internet. Um, and yeah, so that's where my project focuses on, on the detection of audio deepfakes. So this is my method for the goals and steps. My goal was seeing how effective the lexical content would be for analyzing audio deepfakes. This essentially means that whatever is being said in the audio file, is that going to have an effect on how it's able to analyze that to detect whether that, that file is a fake audio or a real one. So that means I'll be evaluating multiple transcripts on different machine learning models, which I'll go more into detail about. As for the steps, the first thing was data collection. So I had to figure out a good data set that I'd like to use for this project for the, in, for the impact of lexical content as well as audio parts. So that's where I came up onto ASV Spoof Challenge 2019 data set. So the reason I cho chose this data set is because of its very equally distributed um, files, which means that there's ranges from five seconds to 20 second clips, and it's partitioned into three forms, training, development, and evaluation. And it comprises of over 40 different speakers with equal vision in gender. So these, the reasons behind, these are the reasons why I chose this sort of data set for my project. Then using this data set, I have to organize this data so that it's clean and neater for my model to use to train and test on it. So data organization is basically, in my case, extracting the transcripts or getting the text from the audio files. Then once I put all these texts into a sort of CSV file, I'll train and test this CSV file on different models, which I'll also go more into detail. So this right here is the transcribing process, which is mainly like the data organization sort of. This can also be thought of as pre-processing, where it's like processing the data before actually being in use. So this right here is an image of the folders of the data set ASV Spoof Challenge data set. So you can see the different files here and how they're named and how organized they are. Then right here, this is the text file that shows which of these files are real videos and which ones are not. So here it's, you can see in this column, if it says spoof, um, that means it's fake. And if it's bonafide, it means it's a real video, or I'm sorry, a real audio. So using these sort of files as seen here, I wrote down or I coded a script that is able to extract the text from these audio files. So this right here, you can see is my code, and this is the output for each of the files. So for the transcriptions, you can see examples such as like address, or they can lease at any time, or they can leave at any time. So using all of these transcriptions I did, I move it to a new, to like a Google Sheets to create a CSV file. And that way it's easier for my model to train and test on. So once this pre-processing is done, I'm going to be doing my overall workflow or using the classifiers I decided on. So this right here, yeah, is the overall workflow. As I explained before, this was deciding the data set, um, extracting the features or pre-processing, and then applying the new created CSV file data set onto the three classifiers I've chosen. So here I chose the decision tree, the logistic regression, as well as the convolutional neural network. They're all very well-known models when it comes to ML-related research or in other forms as well. So the reasons I chose, there are many reasons why I chose these classifiers. So starting off with the decision tree. For the decision tree, it helps choose between several actions and it automatically finds um, the smallest maximum depth of tree of the longest process outcome. 
As for the as for the logistic regression, it's very efficient to train and yields a higher performance in solving binary classification due to its predictive power and probability values. And finally, this convolutional neural network, neural network is a very well known form of a machine learning model and is applied in almost many research related topics because it helps find patterns in complex data, extracts effective features, and it's very appropriate for 1D structure of words, even sentence and sentence of paragraphs. So in this case, I'm applying the words of audio files, which is very um, helpful when it comes to convolutional neural networks. So the last part of my method is the training and testing part. The materials I used are TensorFlow, Jupyter Notebook, Google Collab. So these two are different environments, which are very well known in machine learning. Then it's the data sets I used. Um, well, in this case, it's the data set. So I used ASU's Proof 2019 challenge data set. And then finally, the necessary Python libraries. For instance, seen below are the images of some of the libraries I used. So Pandas, NumPy, Scikit-Learn, and Matlab. Matplotlib to get a detailed analysis of my results. As for the design, when it comes to training and testing split, the very well known well very well known split is the eighty and twenty train and test split, in which eighty percent of your data goes to the training part, and then at the remaining twenty percent go to the testing part. This way, it's able to get a better um, understanding of the patterns in the training set. So if there's a larger amount of training, then it's very helpful for a final analysis of the testing. And for the convolutional neural network, um, after a few trials, I was able to get a good result from setting the batch size to 150 and 25 epochs. So now we'll go over the results of each of my classifiers. So starting off for the decision tree, the training accuracy was 99% and the testing accuracy was 89%. So you can see over here that the test data accuracy is seen here. This is the confusion matrix. It shows the differences between having the label and the predicted value, both of them being right or if they're opposite. So in this case, the zero zero means that the true label means that it is a real file, and the model also determined um, also determined a real file as well. So that shows that it's a higher color. So if it's higher here, that means that it's able to get um, more of them correct, or more of the values are ending up being in that section. Same thing for being a fake file, the true label being a fake file, and the model also predicting it being fake. Then there's the opposite ones where they're sort of like errors in which we are opposite and not agreeing with one another. So that shows these parts are where the model is failing. And as for the decision tree, here is a kind of like a workflow of how the tree is being created. So this is just a small portion of this massive decision tree and how there's different parameters that are able to divide each data in order to get a final result. So there's a lot of layers in this case. Then there's the logistic regression model. The training accuracy was 97% and the testing accuracy was 94%. So here there Sorry, over here, the testing accuracy can also be seen with a 94% accuracy. Then there's also the confusion matrix as well. But you can see there's a higher result when it comes to getting the correct values compared to incorrect predictions. And also you can see the differences in the color scale as well. And also the labels right here. Um, oh, there seems to be an issue over here, but um, these are not the correct values or accuracies here. Well, actually for the training accuracy, it was over 100%. And the testing accuracy was around 98%. So 
so yeah this right here is the correct accuracy seen below and here is the module accuracy for each epoch and how it's able to get a better accuracy for each one so it starts off with almost 0.5 percent or sorry 50 percent of getting the training data the testing data correct over time getting almost to 90 percent as seen here and then this is the the structure of this convolutional neural network so you have two embedding layers the dropout then the convolutional 2d layer then the lstm layer which is a very um well known very helpful when it comes to word related data sets and then dropout and then a dense layer another dropout and then another dense layer So for the challenges, I had a few challenges throughout this project. Um, first going off of the challenges, it was a difficulty in finding the optimal data sets because currently there's many data sets that are generated solely for the video part of deepfakes. And there's not a lot of audio deepfakes that are very harmful and have a huge impact on society. So it took some time, but I was able to find the ASV spoof challenge data set. It takes a lot of time to get the correct one for our for my project or any sort of project so yeah that takes a lot of time um there's also i'm sorry there's also accuracy fluctuating so there's a lot of inconsistencies between the testing accuracies and training accuracies and they're very unexpected and it was a challenge to do the hyper parameter tuning and optimize the ratio of training data and testing data and number of iterations to obtain the highest accuracy. So yeah, for the CNN model especially, I had to decide what batch size and epoch number would be the best result, would give the best result in terms of detecting fake audio files through lexical content. But I took around maybe 20 different um, trials to get the final result. So yeah, I a lot in it involved a lot of trial and error. And finally, there is not able to recognize the audio. So for my uh, pre-processing script to be able to convert the audio file to uh, a text, some of the audio files were very difficult to understand. And it will always throw out an error almost so many times that at first I would just have to constantly keep running the code myself manually rather than doing some sort of exception error. So yeah, that meant that instead of giving some sort of blank result into the CSV file, I actually had to put my own sort of output instead of a blank. So I ended up being like, I ended up writing can't understand audio. So it was kind of easy for actually most of the models then in that case to realize that if it had can't understand audio, then that's automatically a deep fake audio file and it could classify those ones correctly. So it's also some sort of pattern sometimes when you realize poorly generated audio defects versus very highly affected defects that can be that can fool many people in the internet and outside. And as for the interpretation of results, wow. seeing the accuracies and results based on lexical content, there is a it highlights a possible implication of analyzing transcripts on audio defects. And it also provides a lot of more information along with audio and images. So it shows that there can be multiple other modalities that will also be very helpful in providing a more detailed analysis for deepfakes and deepfake detection. And as for conclusions, so you can see that the best model was the convolutional and LSTM layer neural network. Um, and that received almost a 98% accuracy. But the other ones also yielded very high accuracies as well. For instance, the decision tree yielded 89% and the logistic regression yielded almost a 94%. But yeah, based on the results, it can be realized that this sort of method can be used for deepfake detection to help many industries, 
There's a lot of the industries being affected from the creation of deepfakes. As, as said before, like law enforcement, social media, um, as well as like software companies. So it can be used in businesses, law, social media, almost everywhere. So that it can help bring back trust in the digital environment. And there's a lot of things I'd like to do in future works for this project, as well as for deepfake detection related work. One of the things would be developing a new audio deepfake data set. So I would like to create some sort of data set that would have many, uh, you know, more like an effect or impact on society if those sort of videos were to be released and spread out. So I would like to try out and see if I'm able to put videos of certain celebrities or politicians as those people will have a lot of impact on the internet and social media. I also like to apply different types of other models as well, such as the Transformers model. It is a very recent or novel related um, model that is especially used in NLP related problems. Yeah, so Transformers are a deep learning model that adopts the mechanism of self-attention and it was recently introduced in 2017 and increasingly the model choice for many NLP related problems. So in this case, I can use it for lexical content analysis. I'd also like to do research more as to identify real-time deep fakes or real-time detection because this way it's faster for people to identify using this tool whether this sort of video is real or not and make a final conclusion instantly. There's also a final, another main future research, future work I'd like to do is combining multiple modalities. So there's all, there's a lot of research done only on one sort of modality, only the video portion or only the audio portion. So I'd like to see how combining all these different modalities will help bring a higher analysis or a higher accuracy, hopefully, to deepfakes that consist of multiple things at once. It's possible for deepfakes not only to replace the face with another person, but also to do lip syncing and do human voice cloning as well. So if you've seen in the Morgan Freeman video, that was only a video deepfake, but it was very easily, it can easily be changed also to have human voice cloning to Morgan Freeman's voice. Yeah, and also I'd also like to see how textual analysis would be an extra modality to apply. So in total, almost three different modalities together to get a better result. So yeah, this was my talk today um, and I'm open for any questions.